So I, I got my nursing degree and I started working as a nurse and, uh, and then I quite accidentally got into writing and wound up writing for magazines and, and, uh, and then books. And I started, I, I wrote, uh, I, I moved back to New Auburn. I'd been away for 12 years. I left when I was 18 and, and then 12 years later I was working as a writer and I, I, I could work from pretty much anywhere. So I thought, well, I want to go back to New Auburn. That's where I'm from. That's where I'm most comfortable. That place to me feels like an old pair of jeans. And so I went back to New Auburn and, uh, I bought a little house on Main Street there, yeah, right in the heart of the action. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm kind of kind of a loner, kind of keep to myself, and uh, I don't go to any of the local churches, I don't belong to the softball league, or I, I don't bowl, I can't polka, I don't go to any of the taverns. Uh, so I had to find a way to join the community in a, in a formal sense, so I joined the fire department. And people say, well, that's very noble of you to join the fire department there. And I said, no, uh, my mom and my two brothers were already on, and I didn't want to be the only one Sunday night without any stories. <laughs> so I joined the fire department, and really that's how I came to rediscover my hometown after 12 years away, just one call at a time, making fire calls and ambulance calls. And um, I, uh, I wrote an essay about being... Uh, a volunteer firefighter in a small town and then I wrote a story about being a volunteer EMT in a rural area and what that's like and uh, someone saw those two essays and they asked me if I could write a book uh, uh, based on that material and I said why not I'm a desperately self-employed freelance writer in rural Wisconsin <laughs> you know it's uh, people ask me they say where do you get your inspiration and I tell him, uh, my muse is a little bald-headed guy named Jim. Uh, he sits in a swivel chair nine miles up the road from me at the Shatek State Bank, and he holds my mortgage. <laughs> and if I don't write another book, he takes my house away. It's really all the inspiration I need. So I wrote a book about moving back to my hometown and, and joining the fire department, and, and the book was called Population 485. And um, since that book has come out, I've received a number of emails and letters from people saying, we just loved your book about life in the small town. As a matter of fact, we loved it so much that we sold everything and we're moving to a small town. <laughs> and I always say, well, hang on there, Spanky. Uh, <laughs> Because small towns can be difficult places. They have long memories. You can be 50 years old trying to live down something that happened when you was 15 in the gravel pit. <laughs> Not to put too fine a point on it. And even in my case, I was moving back of my own free will and I was eager to return and ultimately I had 12 of the most wonderful years of my life living back in my hometown there and being on the fire department. But even I uh, had a little bit of trepidation about making the move. And the reason for that is that I wasn't the same guy when I went back to New Auburn as I was when I left. And what I like to tell people is that when I left New Auburn, I was a, I was a farm boy, a good student, and a fair defensive end. I returned 12 years later a long-haired writer with soft hands and a nursing degree. So there was a certain amount of street cred to recover with some of my buddies in the coon hunting crowd. <laughs> I've since had to update the anecdote specifically as it pertains to the long hair. <laughs> For years I had long hair, waist length. There's two reasons I no longer have long hair, and the first, sadly, is just generalized crop failure. <laughs> really got to the point where there was no point. And the other reason is that it had started to get real thin on top, it was still real long and back, and I thought, you know, I really ought to cut it off, I'm headed for the Ben Franklin look here. <laughs> But I, I hadn't made the move yet, and then we got paged out one spring to fight a grass fire out on the railroad tracks. 
And I was right up in there in the teeth of the flames, knocking it down, fighting from the black, as any well-trained wildland firefighter will tell you that you must. But I was right up in there, and all of a sudden, one of the other firefighters ran up and started patting me. Now, normally, you don't get a lot of that. So I said, what are you doing? And he said, man, your hair's on fire. <laughs> and indeed, it was crackling right along. So at that point, I thought, you know, if it ain't falling out, it's bursting into flames. And <laughs> just going to cut it all off. 